The Moscow Mathematical Papyrus is an ancient Egyptian mathematical papyrus, also called the Golanish Chif Mathematical Papyrus. After its first owner outside of Egypt, Egyptologist Vladimir Golenishchev. Golenishchev bought the papyrus in 1892 or 1893 in Thebes. It later entered the collection of the Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow, where it remains today. Based on the paleography and orthography of the hieratic text, the text was most likely written down in the 13th dynasty and based on older material probably dating to the 12th dynasty of Egypt, roughly 1850 BC, approximately 5 and a half meters long and varying between 3.8 and 7.6 centimeters wide. Its format was divided into 25 problems with solutions by the Soviet Orientalist Vasily Vasilyevich Struve in 1930. It is a well-known mathematical papyrus along with the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus. The Moscow Mathematical Papyrus is older than the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus, while the latter is the larger of the two exercises contained in the Moscow Papyrus. The problems in the Moscow papyrus follow no particular order, and the solutions of the problems provide much less detail than those in the Rhine mathematical papyrus. The papyrus is well known for some of its geometry problems. Problems 10 and 14 computer surface area and the volume of a frustum respectively. The remaining problems are more common in nature. Ships part problems problems 2 and 3 are ships part problems. One of the problems calculates the length of a ship's rudder and the other computes the length of a ship's mast given that it is one-third plus one-fifth of the length of a cedar log originally 30 cubits long. Aha problems Aha problems involve finding unknown quantities if the sum of the quantity and part of it are given. The Rhine Mathematical Papyrus also contains four of these type of problems. Problems 1, 19, and 25 of the Moscow Papyrus OAHA problems. For instance problem 19 asks one to calculate a quantity taken 1 and 1 half times and added to 4 to make 10. In other words, in modern mathematical notation one is asked to solve PEFSU problems. Most of the problems are PEFSU problems. 10 of the 25 problems. A pefsu measures the strength of the beer made from a hecate of grain A higher pefsu number means weaker bread or beer. The pefsu number is mentioned in many offering lists. For example problem A translates is Example of calculating 100 loaves of bread of pefsu 20 If someone says to you, you have 100 loaves of bread of pefsu 20 to be exchanged for beer of pefsu 4 like 1 half 1 quarter malt date beer First calculate the grain required for the 100 loaves of the bread of pefsu 20 The result is 5 hecate then reckon what you need for a des jug of beer like the beer called one half one quarter malt date beer. The result is one half of the hecate measure needed for des jug of beer made from upper Egyptian grain. Calculate one half of five hecate. The result will be two and a half. Take this two and a half four times. The result is ten. Then you say to him, behold. The beer quantity is found to be correct. Baku problems Problems 11 and 23 are Baku problems. These calculate the output of workers. Problem 11 asks if someone brings in 100 logs measuring 5 by 5, then how many logs measuring 4 by 4 does this correspond to? Problem 23 finds the output of a shoemaker given that he has to cut and decorate sandals. Geometry problems 7 of the 25 problems are geometry problems and range from computing areas of triangles to finding the surface area of a hemisphere and finding the volume of a frustum. Two interesting geometry problems. Problem 10 The 10th problem of the Moscow Mathematical Papyrus asks for a calculation of the surface area of a hemisphere or possibly the area of a semi-cylinder. Below we assume that the problem refers to the area of a hemisphere. The text of problem 10 runs like this. Example of calculating a basket. You are given a basket with a mouth of four and a half. What is its surface? Take one ninth of nine the basket is half an eggshell. You get one. Calculate the remainder which is eight. 
Calculate one ninth of eight. You get two thirds plus one sixth plus one eighteenth. Find the remainder of this eight after subtracting two thirds plus one sixth plus one eighteenth. You get seven plus one ninth. Multiply seven plus one ninth by four plus one half. You get thirty two. Behold this is its area. You have found it correctly. The solution amounts to computing the area as this means the scribe of the Moscow papyrus used to approximate pi. Problem 14. Volume of frustum of square pyramid. The 14th problem of the Moscow mathematical calculates the volume of a frustum. Problem 14 states that a pyramid has been truncated in such a way that the top area is a square of length 2 units the bottom a square of length 4 units, and the height 6 units. As shown, the volume is found to be 56 cubic units, which is correct. The text of the example runs like this. If you are told, a truncated pyramid of 6 for the vertical height by 4 on the base by 2 on the top, you are to square the 4, result 16. You are to double 4, result 8. You are to square this 2, result 4. You are to add the 16 and the 8 and the 4, result 28. You are to take 1 third of 6, result 2. You are to take 28 twice, result 56. C. It is of 56. You will find it right. The solution to the problem indicates that the Egyptians knew the correct formula for obtaining the volume of a truncated pyramid. Researchers have speculated how the Egyptians might have arrived at the formula for the volume of a frustum but the derivation of this formula is not given in the papyrus. Other papyri. Other mathematical texts from ancient Egypt include Berlin Papyrus 6619, Egyptian Mathematical Leather Roll, La Hun Mathematical Papyri, Rhine Mathematical Papyrus, General Papyri, Papyrus Harris I, Roland Papyrus, for the two, N Table C, RMP2, N Table.